This is the best way to write your joins. You see, the joins we've seen in the past, the last couple of slides, have been traditional type joins, but they're not ANSI standard. This join here is the same join we just did. It's going to produce the same information. It's going to run at the same performance level, but it will work on every system out here. Now, I make two changes. In the from clause, instead of separating the tables being joined by a comma, I actually take the comma out and I put the word enter join. I'm halfway home. Then I take the where clause that was before and I replace it with an on clause. And now you've got ANSI standard joins. Here's two of these joins side by side and they're exactly the same. In our first example, it's a traditional join where we separate the two tables in the from clause with a comma. And then we have a where that establishes what two columns will join these tables together. It's the same thing in our ANSI example over here, except instead of the comma separating those tables, we take it out goodbye, and we put in inner join, and then we take out that where clause and we replace it with an on clause, and you have two equivalent joins, but I want you to think about using that ANSI join with the words inner join and on. That will be better for you in the long run, but if you're in an IT shop, you're going to see it both ways. Okay, my friends. I'm going to see just how good you've been paying attention. So let's open up those ears even better and think about what this is going to do. I have done the whole join for you because I'm a nice guy, except I have left off the on clause. I want you to look at the tables and I want you to tell me what columns are we going to join the employee table to the department table on. Good luck. If you got this and you're new, you might be some type of super genius. That's what I'm looking for. Nice work here. Now, when you looked at the two tables, employee table and department table, you said, you know what? They do have a common key, department number depno. So the on clause was e.depno equals d.depno, and that's going to be the perfect join. Now, notice the alias of e and d. That's because it's so short and sweet. I actually say, hey, I want to select my columns from employee as E, department as D, and that's a very common use of aliasing. And then I can say on E.depno equals D.depno. I got one more question for you. I'm actually pulling in first name, last name, and department name, but I didn't put E.first name, E.last name, D.department name. Why not? because those columns were only in one of the tables and the system recognizes that. You're doing some great work here. Take a look at this little masterpiece and I shouldn't be calling it a masterpiece because there's an error here. I've been trying to find it all night. Can you find it? Help your man out here. You're getting so good, you don't even need me anymore. You found it. Depno was in our select list, and daggone it, it was in both tables, so it needed to be fully qualified. I needed to say either E.depno or D.depno. Probably wouldn't have made any difference on the report, but I got to tell it which department number from which table I want in my select list. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. The next is Query Chameleon, a query tool looking to help your data adapt to any surroundings. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date on all our videos.